You know, I got here this morning and uh, I wasn't feeling real great. I'm still not feeling real great. So we're going to survive on the Holy Spirit this morning. Because he gave me a little boost right before I got up here listening to Mr. Bill. Always like hearing Mr. Bill sing. I, uh, the last couple of times I've been up here, I've had some props and I've done some crazy stuff with ACDC and kids running around. Today, I kind of want to talk to you about a sin. First of all, let me say, do we all believe, do we all agree that we have a sovereign God, we serve a sovereign God? Amen. I believe that God knew last week who was going to be here this week. And I believe He prepared a message for somebody here today that He needed you to hear. More importantly, more importantly, I feel like God has a great work for you. We've got to find that work for you. We've got to... Uh, You've got to open the eyes of your hearts. David so graciously sang that song this morning. Today I want to talk to you, and I'm, I'm going to go ahead and apologize right now if, if uh, anybody gets uncomfortable, okay? You might tell I'm a little uncomfortable. We're going to talk about a sin that... Uh, is not necessarily listed as a sin in the Bible, but we're going to find one word that's a very close cousin to what we're going to talk about in, in, in Scripture. I want to talk about resentment. Resentment as itself is not, is not considered a, a sin in the Bible. You're not going to find that in there. But resentment, resentment can control you, it can ruin you, it can destroy you, it can destroy those around you. And resentment, ladies and gentlemen, for a lack of better terms, because I didn't take the time to, to look up Webster's dictionary's layout of what it is, definition. If you're whole if you're harboring ill will, if you're mad about something, and you're aiming that at anybody in particular or anything in particular that's being resentful. Do you believe that you can be resentful to God? I have. I've been resentful to God because I lost a finger when I graduated high school. And I didn't get, get the scholarship that I was offered. Uh, do you resent the person at your job that got the promotion over you? Do you resent your family because you work hard for everything you've got but yet they're leeching on you? They want more and more and more. They don't do anything. Are you resentful because of that? Are you resentful because of a handicap you had? I was. It took me a long time to, to get over that. I mean, you can only go through the McDonald's drive through so many times and have the quarters drop through there. <laughs> oh my god. You get a little resentful, you know? Probably can't wear your wedding ring. Like, that's a little bit more important. <laughs> my, my wife resents that I can't wear my wedding ring. No, I do too. That's, that's, uh... Really missing those quarters I dropped, though. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, are you are you a child that's resentful because your family is split, mom and dad have gone different directions, or you've lost a parent? Are you resentful? Hey, you know I could go on and on and on, uh, but I'm sure I've touched somebody already with just those few things. If if I made you feel uncomfortable. I'd like for you to take the card or the piece of paper that's in your chair, and if you have a resentment that you feel like is controlling your life today, I want you to write that on that piece of paper and fold it up. And just hang on to it, okay? 
if, if you're resentful to someone or something, just just write it down and hang on to it. Okay, we're going to pray about that in a little while, but I want you to recognize that you do have resentment and that it does take a control of you, over you. And that's nothing more than the devil whispering in your ear. And we rebuked his name this morning. We told him he had no place here. This is God's house. And we can come to God's house and we can ask for forgiveness. We can ask to have these things removed out of our life. If you would, turn with me to... Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 on page 897 and learning the ropes. We're going to be in uh, chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 30 through 32 say, And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So we don't see resentment, resentment in there, right? But we do see bitterness. That's a very close cousin to resentment. It's so hard, it's so hard sometimes to just let go. It's hard, especially if you've been hurt by something. <coughs> Say you've been hurt by the church. You're not the only person that ever been hurt by a church. And I guarantee you, you weren't hurt on purpose. The church family loves you. But sometimes it happens. And sometimes you become resentful. Sometimes you get bitter, angry, and you hang on to these things. If you remember from about three weeks ago, we got to let go. We have another fight to fight. The thief is coming. We have to let go of the resent. You have to be man enough, woman enough, to confront that resentment head on and defeat it with God's help. God asks nothing more of us than to be loving. God asks nothing more of us than to be forgiving. But dang, it's hard. It is hard. And I know it's hard because I've been there. I know I'm not speaking French. I know everybody in here understands what I'm saying. <laughs> but if we can reflect back on the last three weeks, we know that there's a door. We know that there's distraction. We know that there's a thief coming. So we're getting closer. We're getting closer to being one with God. But now we're tackled with the task of letting go of our bitterness. Letting go of that resentment that we had towards the church for stepping on my toes. Letting go of that bitterness for what happened four years ago. Letting go of what happened yesterday. Letting go of the gentleman that cut me off this morning on the way coming over here and almost pushed me in the ditch. Letting go of all of these things, all of the anger, the resentment, the bitterness, we have to let go. <clears throat> when, I, when I started having God put this on my heart, there's not a whole lot. I can't go there because of the wind. It sure does feel good, though. I come back over here. I had to tackle... I had to tackle a lot of stuff on my own just to be able to get up here and tell you this. Because I still was resentful over some things. I was bitter over some things. 
And you know, as you sit and you think about it, aren't there so many more positive things you can do with your life than sit and dwell about what somebody did to you? God is the judge, not you. God is going to take care of all of that when we all get to heaven. He's going to move the sheep to the sheep line and the goats to the goat line, and that's going to be it. What are you doing now? Why are you worried about, why am I worried about things that I have no control over? Why am I holding ill will towards somebody when it's God they have to deal with, not me? You know, and I'm going to tell you this now. We're talking about being an active member of this church. We don't, we don't write down every time you come to church. We don't. We kind of got an idea who we see week after week after week. And if you haven't been here six times in 90 days and you want to vote today, vote. But if you haven't been, that's between you and God. Okay? I, I don't know how else to put it. We can't, we can't worry about anything like that because God's got it. God's going to take care of it. All we can do is come here each and every week as much as possibly as we can and serve God. And if we're serving God to the best of our ability and God has provided us with a gift, God has provided us with the ability to cook, clean, sing, preach, mow grass, weed eat, spray weed killer, Put out new toilet paper in the bathroom. Working in the youth department. That's all we can do, folks. We can't worry about everything else. We have to get right with the Lord. And the only way we're going to do that is to just let go of all the junk in your life that you have no control over. Turn with me to... Uh, Page 901, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Just a couple of pages to the right. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. When I read that scripture, it sank in that I have no control. Why am I continually worrying about the bad stuff when there's so much good stuff? But we get consumed in self-pity. We get consumed in self-anger. We get consumed in the fact that David stepped on my toes and scuffed my boots. Little stuff. Okay? Little stuff. And we let it eat us up. Something bad happens at work. How long, how long before you let go? Something bad happens at work. You stew on it all the way home. It gets worse because somebody cuts you off. Because you're stuck in traffic because of an accident for three hours. You get home. The dog's out. The horse is out. The goat's out. You get all that taken care of. Your wife comes to you and says, I'm fixing dinner, but I need you to go to the store and get milk. It just piles and piles and piles. How long before you let go? You don't. You don't. It's human nature. You just hang on to it. I want to hang on to all this crap. Why do we want to hang on to it? I don't get it. The thing that we need to be doing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You made it home. That's excellent. You got through that three hour traffic jam. You made it home. You didn't cut your finger off whenever you were working on the fence. That's excellent. You got to see your wife and family even though she sent you to the store. Okay? It, it's the, it, we got to just twist it just a little bit to make it good. Quit hanging on to the crap. <coughs> Verse 
crap F. You gotta add F when you say crap on stitch. Crap F. Then it's okay. That's King James. Turn with me to page 866 to Romans. Chapter 12, verse 21. Do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. The devil is just sitting and waiting for you to get mad. And then he's going to jump right on your shoulder and he's going to be whispering in your ear. And before you know it, boom, temper has lost. Anger has taken over. Resentment is in full hold. And the crap, if, is just surrounding you. If we could just start today, guys, just start today with that little note of one resentment that you have in your life. And when you walk out of this door today, I want you to throw it in the trash can. Let it go. Today is the day to let something go. Release the evil from your life by doing something good. Do something good today. Focus on that all day. And tomorrow, when you wake up, you're still going to be feeling good. But if you let the crap hang around, you keep dwelling on it, when you wake up tomorrow, you're still going to feel like crow. You're not going to feel great because you didn't do something good. And if you do something good today, but you don't let go of that resentment, it was all for naught. What does what does being what is what is pure? What is that? We just read that. What is pure? How do how do we become pure? How do we how do we let go of all these things you're telling me to let go when the idiot next door keeps letting his cow get out in my pasture and my bull keeps trying to breed it and he wants me to pay for everything and he won't help me fix the fence. How, how am I supposed to find purity in that? I don't know. I don't know. But I can tell you this. If there's any way that you can walk out of this church today and just feel like you let go of one thing in your life that's been nagging. Just one. I'm not asking you to do it all at one time. Because you're going to have to do the ultimate on your own to let go of everything. You're not going to like what i got to tell you on this, but you're going to have to hit your knees. You're going to have to get on your knees. and you, First of all, you're going to have to ask for forgiveness for harboring this ill will to whoever or whatever. Then you're going to have to ask God for the strength and the wisdom to allow you to move forward and let go. That's going to be on you. I can't help you with that. Alan can't help you with that. None of the lay pastors, nobody, we can't, we can't do that for you. We can pray with you. We can pray for you. But it's up to you to do the work. I'm going to wrap this up. I told you it was going to be a short one. Be forgiven. Be loving. And if all else fails, you're just a forgiver and a lover. You're not going to lose anything by doing it. Okay? But think of how much you can gain by doing it. We talk about in our prayer requests how we want God to, to heal this or fix that or, or provide this or provide that, but how many times do we ask God to take something out of our life? How many times do we ask God to take something away that's a burden? 
that's a stressor. It's all about how you pray, guys. And if you ask God for forgiveness, for being a sinner, the sinner that you are, let's be honest, if we weren't all sinners, we wouldn't be here right now. And if we weren't all sinners, I don't know. I lost the train of thought. We wouldn't be human. We talked about the church hurting you earlier. Okay, it's not. I'm not just nitpicking this church. It's every church. There's somebody hurting every church, and the reason there's people hurting every church is because our families, our collective families, are broken. Therefore, when you get to the church, your church family is now broken. There are no such things as perfect churches. There's just not. Because we're not a perfect people. Okay? If by some chance you find a perfect church, don't go there because you're going to mess it up. <laughs> so take the resentment. Okay? Take the resentment and throw it in the trash on the way out the door. Just do something good today. No matter how small, no matter how big, I'm not telling you to go buy your neighbor a, a brand new set of cow panels for his cow to keep her in the fence. But do something nice. Help him fix the fence instead of griping about him always tearing it up. So do something nice and love somebody. Love somebody, forgive somebody, and tomorrow when you wake up, you're going to feel better. Okay? All right, I'm going to pray for us. Um, we're going to skip the band coming up today for the final uh, song like we normally do so that we can start this boat. Um, after I pray, we'll take about a 10-minute break so we can get the table set up with the ballots and the roll. Uh, and then we'll ring the bell and call everybody back in when we're ready to get started. So, again, the people that you saw stand up today, take this next 10, 15 minutes and really pray to God who you want on that team. You may not know that person real well. You may have only talked to them once or twice. You may have never talked to them, but you've shaken hands in passing here. But God will let you know His will if you just pray. God will point you in the right direction and put it on your heart. Because let's face it, folks, this church needs a pastor. Amen. This, folk, this church needs a leader. And these, did I already tell you we're voting for six? No, we're voting for six. Out of that list of people, there's going to be six names you check off, or circle, or underline, or I don't know how we're doing it because I hadn't seen the ballot myself. But six people, six names off of that list, and don't forget we got to write Miss Margaret on there. Raise, raise your hand, Miss Margaret. Yes, ma'am. You already put it on there? Okay, Miss Margaret's name is on the list. You don't have to add it. Our personnel team's been back. That's why they haven't been paying attention to me. They were back there working. I got left off and got back put on. What's that? I got left off and got put back on. You got left off and put back on. Yes, ma'am. So, again, six names for the team that is going to be number one. And above all else, prayerful. This pastor search team is going to pray more than you could ever imagine because they're going to have to seek God's will in finding the next man to fill this pulpit. Okay? So y'all pray about that. Let's go to the Lord. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Father, and we just ask to lift up these names of the men and women that have volunteered because you put it on their heart to find a new pastor for this church, Father. Father, we ask that you give them the knowledge and the wisdom, no matter who they may be, to do your will for this church. Father, we ask that you're with them each and every time they meet, each and every time they make a discussion, each and every time they even think about this pastoral search team. Father, we just ask that you're there. 
We ask that you're there giving them the strength, the knowledge, the wisdom. And Father, we ask that you remove all doubt, all hate, all resentment. Father, I also ask that for this congregation, Father, for this church family. Father, when they walk out the door today, Father, just have them take that resentment and throw it away. Let it go. Father, we realize that uh, you are perfect. But you created an imperfect people. And Father, we know, we know, and we believe through our faith that there was a reason for that. Father, we love you and we praise you and we just ask that you forgive our imperfections, Father. You forgive our sins. And just be with us each and every day in a more prevalent role so that we may know, we may feel you at our side at all times. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right.